back with another video for you today. I am just about to leave Whidbey Island. I've been stationed here for four years, approximately, and I figured I need to make this video while everything is still really fresh in my mind about the things to do here on Whidbey and kind of give you my guide about being stationed here. So it's been such a journey. We'll get into it. So I've got a bunch of topics for you. Um, kind of the first place to give you some background is that um, I was first stationed here with VAQ-129, and that is the um, FRS for the Groundwater community. So after being stationed there, I got orders to VAQ-136, and that is a fleet squadron here on the flight line. Um, so when you hear about where you are gonna go, it's probably going to be a VAQ squadron, or it's going to be a VP squadron, um, or the hospital. So I'm going to make this um, not necessarily for an aviator coming here, but really anyone getting stationed to would be. And it's going to be pretty general. So if you have more questions about living here, uh, definitely put them in the comments. And I'm more than happy to make another video, especially if I have specific questions to go on. Uh, that's just a little bit easier for me. Um, to know like what you guys actually want to hear because I'm just covering some general topics uh, today. So first I'll say that I've absolutely loved living here. I'm going to be really sad to leave the other places I was stationed. As you might know in my previous videos, I was starting out my career in Pax River, Maryland. Um, I loved it there mostly just because my parents are, are in um, Baltimore, so I was able to see them a lot. And that was a huge blessing. I'm always so jealous of people that get stationed close to where their family is located um, because what a good deal that is, gotta love it. Um, after that, I got moved to um, Florida, Pensacola for training. Then after training, I uh, selected here at Woody Island. Um, this was my first choice to come here and I'm very grateful it happened to me because uh, the other options for places that people in my community could have gone are um, or not my community, but people in my training pathway um, could have gone. It includes Whidbey, Lamar, California, and then finally Oceana, Virginia. So those might have been your options as well. And I'm really happy that I got stationed here because, you know, we're, we're on island time out here. It is a lifestyle choice and um, you're going to be able to do a lot of cool things when you live here. So. Um, we'll get into it. Okay, so there are three main places that people live uh, when they get stationed here, and I'll also cover base housing or what I know about base housing, um, but it's kind of limited, so I'll do my best. But uh, there are three towns here that people primarily go to or look for for places for their family to live or them to live. Um, that includes Anacortes, which is on Fidalgo Island, uh, and that is just north of Whidbey Island. Um, to give you a little bit of the geography, you've got Deception Pass Bridge that connects Fidalgo with um, Whidbey, of course. And uh, up on Fidalgo, uh, that whole thing is pretty much Anacortes. Lots of neighborhoods, uh, really good schools up there, um, close to the water. And then you're a little bit closer to access to like Seattle and the mainland. Right, so. Um, we're back. Okay, so yeah, Anacortes, great place to be. Lots of restaurants, lots of bars. You got that good access to uh, Five South, which will take you down to um, Seattle, like I mentioned. So a little bit easier uh, to get your access off island uh, up there. Um, also, the other communities that some, some people, very few, but still some live in include Mount Vernon and Bellingham. So I would look in some of those places if you are stationed here for housing. Um, a lot of times people are stuck with the decision of having to look farther away, like farther and farther away from base just to get that better variety um, because being an island, we're pretty limited when it comes to housing, unfortunately. Um, housing and the commute to the airport or Seattle or a place where maybe your spouse might work. Those are kind of the main issues with, with be, living here, being stationed here. Um, everything else is pretty good. So um, yeah, covered in Cortis and off island housing. So that is that. Um, the Naval Air Station is located in Oak Harbor, 
Washington, and that is the northernmost town of Whidbey Island. Whidbey itself is um, a very, very expansive uh, north-south oriented island. Uh, it is, I think I've heard it's the longest island in America, and it does take you about an hour to drive from the north to the south. So um, lots of things to see here on Whidbey, but Oak Harbor is that northernmost town and it is where the Naval Air Station is located. Again, a lot of options there. That's probably where you're, you're gonna get the bulk of your uh, housing available, whether that is a house and a, a condo or um, base housing as well. Okay, so the last place that a lot of people live is Coopville, that's where I live. This beautiful place, as you can see, I'm here in the forest. Gotta love it. I love it here so much. Um, it's kind of like the oldest and quaintest part of the island, in my opinion. We, were, we actually had um, two Hollywood blockbusters filmed here, and that was The Ring and um, Park School Magic. So look up those movies if you're going to come here, because um, they do give a pretty accurate representation of living here. So um, definitely check those out. And um, yeah, Coopville is great because there's a beautiful downtown wharf that is from like 1850 or something, um, lots of old buildings, and uh, it's just a really charming, calming place to go, uh, whether you're out shopping or eating or just out on a walk there. Um, I love heading down to the wharf and I'm very lucky to live within walking distance of it. So it's like a 20 minute walk and then I'm right on the water. So um, can't be that about being in the Navy. More often than not, nine times out of 10, you are stationed right near um, a waterfront, a lake, or well, not a lake, but well, maybe Great Lakes, a lake, an ocean, um, the Puget Sound. Uh, so it can't be that, gotta love that. So um, I love living here and I've been in Oak Harbor as well. I've moved six times while being stationed here, and that is far too many times, but I always had friends coming and going, deploying and moving, PCSing. So um, I've been really lucky to always find housing through my friends that have owned. Um, I've been a renter this whole time and still am a renter today. So I'm just very lucky that one of my friends uh, owns this beautiful stunning house and that he lets me live here. Um, but other than that, I've always rented in Oak Harbor from my friends that owned in Oak Harbor. Um, otherwise, it might be a little bit more of a tough go to find housing here. I definitely recommend looking on um, Military by Owner. That's one website to look at. Um, maybe finding a realtor here. There are so many um, Navy spouses that are realtors, which is awesome to um, patronize their businesses. Um, where else can you look? Yeah, base housing is a great option. I'll talk about that in a second. Really just through your friends, like your friend network, um, asking people, do you know of any anyone that has a room available? Um, yeah, so I've always been pretty lucky with that. So just got to use your network as well uh, to find housing here. It's competitive. You got Zillow always, but I feel like the stuff on Zillow just like, it's, it's like that, like it's so quick. Um, I think they're working on that, but yeah, like I said, housing and the trip to the airport are like the two hurdles to jump when you come here. So, um, base housing. I have inquired for myself about base housing. It is a really good deal because a lot of these neighborhoods are waterfront and um, like I said before, you can't beat that. Like They're, they're beautiful and um, I can't really speak for the quality of the houses themselves, but the locations are great. and convenience uh, is really great too and the offices were responsive when I was inquiring for myself uh, they got back to me within about 24 hours so something to think about something to look at there is housing available on NASWI which is NAS Whidbey Island aka NASWI um, and then I'll, I'll kind of call that NASWI or NAS throughout the video we also have the seaplane base so the seaplane base is where seaplanes used to take off and land, um, I don't know how many years ago, 60 years ago, 80 years ago, I don't know. But um, that is more of like an outpost of NASWI. 
There are more services located there, which I'll get into, but there's also a lot of housing. So uh, definitely when you're looking and researching, uh, don't rule out the seaplane base, definitely ask about that um, because you got housing at the seaplane base, housing on base at NAS, and then finally base housing that is off base. Um, so the off base base housing um, is in a really beautiful location. Uh, it's kind of like rural Oak Harbor, so away from downtown Oak Harbor. Um, but incredible views. I'm pretty sure every house has a water view in that neighborhood. Um, so definitely a good place to check out for your family or yourself. Um, and then as far as the barracks go, there's quite a few barracks on base. So if you're a younger sailor, single sailor coming here, um, then that might be an option for you. Uh, we're not really an option, it's where you might have to go. Um, but from visiting the barracks while on watch and stuff like that, um, you know, there's laundry facilities. Uh, it looks like it was built in like the mid 2000s. So not super old, uh, which is nice. Like it, the facilities looked on the newer side um, and you're within walkable distance to work. Um, definitely need some sort of rain gear um, because a lot of times your walk to work will be very rainy if it's not the summer. So definitely that's another, that's like another bummer for sure about being here. Um, the weather can be pretty brutal, especially having to be outside for an extended amount of time is um, brutality sometimes, but um, we make it through and we are very grateful for the good days. Um, so a quick note on the weather while we're on this subject, um, your really good months here are going to be July, August, September, and October. Usually in the summer, um, there is very little rain, maybe one day a week it'll rain, and it's just stunning here, like sickeningly stunning. I'm gonna splice in a bunch of videos that I've taken over the summer and fall, uh, just to kind of give you a picture of um, the things you might be seeing on a daily basis living here. It's it's so amazing. Like it, You understand why tourists from Seattle come here in droves in the summertime. It makes sense. Um, so those are your good months where it's gonna be beautiful out pretty reliably. You won't need to worry much about rain or anything like that. You can be outside, you can wear your light, lighter clothing. Um, the rest of the year though, uh, rain is fair game every day. Some days it's mist, other days it's like pelting and coming up sideways coming up from the bottom, uh, rains every way, like in Forrest Gump, and uh, you just have to deal with it. it. It can get really cold. We usually have like one bad snowstorm in February, like without fail, all four years I've been here. It's happened every year um, where we lose power, work gets canceled for like a week. Um, so I guess you have that to look forward to. You get snow days again, that's good. Um, okay. Yeah, so weather weather can be bad. It can be an obstacle. I had to get used to it. Like my first year here was um, was rough for me because I was coming from Pensacola where I could go to the beach in February. It's just a different place to be. And now you go on a hike in February or you play in the snow or whatever you wanna do or ski, snowboard, but you're not gonna be on the beach, that's for sure. Um, looking down at my notes here, um, yeah, so hopefully the housing housing thing is smooth for you. If you have any more questions, again, just throw them in the comments and I will answer. Um, okay, so that kind of covers the, actually that, yeah, that covers housing. So I'll get into the services and what you can expect on NAS Whidbey Island, so NASWI. That is where all of the operational squadrons are located. Hospital, uh, the Navy Gateway Inns and Suites, um, the RV Park, Cliffside RV Park, absolutely incredible. Even if you just go there for a hike, there's a hiking trail and like a paved trail. Um, that's probably one of my favorite places on the whole island. And whenever I go, I always see couples taking engagement photos there if that gives you any depiction of what it looks like it's stunning so definitely check that out um whether you're an rv person or not there are rentals if you just want to do a night and see what it's like they provide um, the sheets and the towels and a fire pit and two chairs so that could be a nice evening away um, there's yurts as well you can stay in a yurt 
Um, what else is there? Yeah, and you, or you can just bring your own RV as well. Um, there is the Nex. So it's like a mini Nex. It's more of a convenience store, but it does have uniforms. So that's where the uniforms and the tailor shop is located. So that's where you want to go for any uniform pieces is on Nasby. Uh, there's also a taco restaurant. There's a Subway. As much as we try, we, you know, you can't escape Subway. It's not going to leave you. It's always going to be there. Every base you go to in the whole world. Uh, um, so you're sad with that once again. Um, and there's a Wendy's. So just a few options. That is definitely something I would change if I could is just to bring in a coffee shop to base. There's no coffee shop on base. There's plenty of options off base. Um, so I'll, I'll just talk about that now. Um, food options off base, coffee options off base. There are coffee chalets all over the place in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, those are coffee drive throughs where you could take your car on either side and there's a couple of baristas in there and they'll make you a fancy drink or a simple drink, whatever you like. Um, and that's kind of the main way to get coffee if it's not from your own house. Um, there's Starbucks everywhere. Um, where else can you go? Oh yeah, so Jumbo Burrito in Oak Harbor, great place to get lunch. Um, probably the best, like freshest Mexican food on island it comes from there and then, or on, North Whidbey, we'll say. Um, there is the Whidbey Bagel Factory. Love that place. Uh, that's like downtown Oak Harbor. Um, there is Jersey Mike's. That's probably the best sub place that is here. Um, those are kind of the main places I see people go. If they're not going on base, like that's where they would go off base if you want to grab a quick lunch. Um, and then I'll cover in Oak Harbor as well, the grocery stores real quick. So grocery stores, you've got Hagen's, that's kind of the upscale, bougie grocery store, lots of local stuff, really good produce, good meats, the whole bit. Definitely nice to shop there for a treat. It's more of like a fun experience <laughs> than anything else. And I love that. Um, then you have your Safeway, which is, um, you know, just your standard Safeway. There's SARS, Super Saver, and that's more of the discount uh, grocery store, the commissary. Um, we'll get into that in a second when I cover like seaplane based services. Um, what other grocery stores? There's Grocery Outlet, never been there. And then here in Coopville, um, we have the Red Apple Market, and that's where I just went yesterday. It's just itty bitty. You get one option for each thing, but it definitely gets the job done. And I like that it's small town, very small town grocery store. Um, so that's it for grocery stores. As far as bigger stores, like department stores or like where to get more, you have Walmart. Um, the nearest Target is heartbreakingly an hour away, so I don't go there anymore. Um, used to live right behind one in Pensacola, miss those days. Uh, my old house was like behind Target, Chick-fil-A, and um, like just this big strip mall with everything you could want. So that was really convenient. Things are not like that here. So you got to travel. Um, yeah, so if you don't like Walmart, I do recommend going to the next at the seaplane base. So we'll get to the seaplane base now. Okay, seaplane base is kind of where the services are located as far as... Um, Things like Net Big Necks Commissary. There's a gas station. There is a gas station on Nasby as well. Um, forgot to mention that. Um, but there's a car wash at the seaplane base. Um, storage for any car or boat you might want to store. And that housing I mentioned. Um, so yeah, I, I go there mostly, my, my reason to go there most often is either for the next or for the thrift shop. So there's also a thrift shop at the seaplane base, which will have um, any uniform pieces that you might need secondhand. And that's so much cheaper. So I've been doing that lately. Oh my gosh, what a revelation. I wish I knew about that years ago, but better to discover it now than never. 
Um, okay, so that pretty much wraps up the services. Uh, I'll get into more of like the fun outside of work stuff that you have to look forward to coming here to the Pacific Northwest. So uh, weekend trips are a big one. So especially if you're like me and you came from more of a city environment and that's what you like, then there's plenty for you. It's just a slight drive away. So uh, Seattle, everybody has to go to Seattle because you'll pass through there on the way to the airport. But I recommend stopping in there. There's so much to see and do. Um, I won't even be able to scratch the surface, but every food cuisine you can dream of is there. There are really good um, uh, neighborhoods that might have a little more of one or the other, other thing. Uh, so go there, try it all. Um, I love the Mongolian hot pot. I love Mam Noon restaurant. That one's my favorite in the whole city. Um, Starbucks Reserve Roastery is fun. That one's in Seattle. Oddfellows Cafe and Bar. Love that place in Capitol Hill. Um, so those are just a few restaurant ideas for you. Bars and clubs, Capitol Hill, so great. Um, especially if you're coming here and you're single, dating is also hard on the island. So you kind of have to travel for that too. But I've had a lot of friends be successful with finding their girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, or just a boo thing um, down in Seattle. So definitely check that out if you're looking for that. Um, yeah, lots of clubs. I remember X Stadium was a lot of fun. It's stadium, but with an X instead of an S. So that one was a lot of fun. Um, as far as sports go, the Seattle sports fans are some of the best in the world. They're super dedicated and I love to see it because you know, when I was back in Baltimore going to the Orioles games, like no one is there. It's so sad. But for example, in Seattle, even like a lesser, lesser known sport, or it's perfectly known, but less popular in the U.S. would be professional soccer. But it is full in Seattle. You know, that those games sell out, the Seattle Sounders. So at Lumen Field, which is the football stadium, you've got um, the Seahawks, and then you also have the Sounders, the professional soccer team. Uh, both of those are incredibly popular. Uh, I, I feel like the games always sell out, so look early if you're trying to go. Um, and then at the T-Mobile Stadium, you have the Mariners uh, baseball team. So my trick of the trade, which you might get in trouble for, but hopefully not, uh, there is a Coast Guard base that is right across the street from the stadiums. So if you do have your um, your cat card or your dependent ID or uh, retiree card, then you can get on that base and park there for free to go to a game. Um, they have bounced me out of there before because they don't want people parking there for events. So it's only worked uh, a couple times for me, but you can try it, free parking at the game. Can't eat that. Um, let me know if you're successful with that. Um, just kind of depends on which guard you have. So good luck. Um, and then otherwise for Seattle, theater is huge. So there is the Seattle Symphony at Benaroya Hall. There is um, more of like plays, musicals. Those are at Paramount Theater. Um, and that's going to be like your Broadway style shows, whether it's like um, Phantom of the Opera, Wicked, all those good ones. They all tour through um, Paramount Theater. Mean Girls is coming there really soon. I would love to see that. And then you have um, multiple other small theaters that I'm not gonna cover just cause I have never been, but there is the Neptune, which is close to the university, the university being University of Washington. Um, they take up a, a pretty decent part of the city. So uh, part of their university district is the Neptune Theater, and they have um, concerts, comedians, um, more shows like that. So uh, those are incredible as well. I've gone to one concert there at Neptune. So it's more of like the historic smaller theater. Um, and then shows, of course, like big, big acts do come to the uh, stadiums as well. Uh, like Andrea Bocelli is coming there soon to Seattle, which I could go. Um, okay, so that's Seattle. You can get there multiple ways. Um, I might have mentioned before, 
whether you drive or you take the ferry, the ferry is from South Whidbey. Uh, that's going to be the town of Clinton. Clinton to Mukilteo is the ferry line that you want. There are no reservations for it. You just have to drive on or walk on. Um, I recommend for the first time you try the ferry, like try it out, get there early, get there like 30 minutes early for, for the time that you want. The ferry runs about every half hour. It's very convenient. Um, highly recommend it. Um, then the other option is to drive around. So driving up through Fidalgo and then down uh, through Everett. Um, keep in mind, depends on where you live. Like if you live in Anacortes, it's always going to be easier to drive. Like you don't want to take the ferry in that instance. So it just depends on like where on Whidbey Island you might live. Um, if you're towards the south like me, then that's how I do prefer to get to Seattle. Um, but even that way, the ferry does charge like round trip $24. Uh, sometimes I'm just not in the mood for that, so I'll just drive. Um, okay, so that's Seattle. Uh, another weekend trip is Leavenworth, and Leavenworth is more oriented toward like really outdoorsy people. So I have, I have options for everybody here on, on my list. Um, and Leavenworth is a Bavarian town that is most well known for hosting uh, Oktoberfest and a Christmas, like a, a, every weekend and Christmas season they have like Santa Claus and a parade and a Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Um, all those events are absolutely incredible to go to. I always recommend like getting a group together, whether it's your squadron or your unit or whatever. Everybody go get an Airbnb and go participate in um, in all the fun out at Leavenworth. Um, lots of nightlife there as well. Um, and it's, it's just cool. Like I remember lots of bars that even in the dead of winter, you're outside because there's like fireplaces everywhere. So it's that kind of vibe. Like it's very... Um, you feel like you're in the Swiss Alps because there's beautiful snowy mountains all around you. Um, I definitely recommend checking it out, um, even in the summertime. So always good to go to Leavenworth no matter what time of year. Um, in the summer, there's whitewater rafting um, in the winter and, and mountain biking as well. Um, in the summer, skiing and snowboarding out of Stevens Pass. And that is probably the closest um, mountain to go ski skiing and snowboarding on, um, especially if you have the Epic Pass. I believe that does cover Stevens Pass. I might be wrong, but with a uh, military Epic Pass, you get a pretty good deal on um, unlimited skiing or snowboarding. So definitely check that out. Um, and what else at Leavenworth? Um, I don't know. It's just like a Christmas miracle, that place. It is so winter wonderland. Um, Look up alltrails.com as well. So alltrails.com will give you all the information about all the trails around here. There are so many. And I usually get to, now in my old age living here, um, at least like once a week, I'll go once a week on a all trails hike. Um, so I definitely recommend that if you're heading out towards Leavenworth and that is um, right in the mountains. So it's gonna be amazing. Um, speaking of winter wonderlands in the mountains, Canada. So you can head to Whistler and Vancouver again, I'm pretty sure with the COVID regulations. Um, last year, it wasn't an option, but my first year and third year, I believe, no, first and second years, I went, I think so. I went to Whistler uh, each January and loved it. Um, it's absolutely stunning. And yeah, just, you have to go, you have to try it. Going to Vancouver, going to Whistler, it's just nice to be in another country. It's nice, it's fun, you know, it's different. So check that out and um, I recommend it. For a lot of people, you do have to do paperwork to travel uh, outside the US for military. So that's kind of been my deterrent, unfortunately. I haven't made it to Canada as much as I would have if it, if it wasn't for those like paperwork items and stuff, but um, yeah, I've gone to Whistler twice, the first time with friends, second time with my squadron. Um, so it's it's stunning. And again, get, getting those groups together allows you to get like a nice big Airbnb. Um, and that's kind of the way to go, in my opinion. Um, I have stayed at the Fairmont as well um, with my fiance. And that was so great and so romantic. So love that too. Um, that was a special treat. Uh, we even had a fireplace in the room. So Gotta love that. It's amazing. 
Um, and I've never been the one to ski and snowboard, but it's fun to go with my friends that do because I'll just, you know, get some mulled wine or some hot cider and I'll sit by the fire and just wait for them to be done. Um, yeah, not much to hate about that. I get to encounter all the good food and all the uh, drinks and stuff. And then for Whistler as well, um, if you're interested in going up the mountain but not skiing or snowboarding, um, you can take the Peak to Peak gondola ride and that goes up Whistler across to Blackcomb and that's like a 2,000 foot drop right there. Um, and some of the gondolas have glass bottoms. So you can actually see down to the bottom. Uh, and then on the top of Blackcomb, um, just a different view, so go check that out. And um, there's a cafeteria as well, so beautiful cafeteria and like a fine dining restaurant if you like. Um, but just eating on top of a mountain, like that sounds great to me. Um, I went both years up there. The food was great. Like, how did they get all that food up there? Um, okay, and then finally, Bellingham. So Bellingham is also up towards Canada. I want to say it's probably the the largest town until you hit the border. So. Um, kind of like the northernmost um, big big town, bigger bigger city than um, anything else along the way up to the border. But uh, another really cool place, more great nightlife. That's where a lot of people go to hang out. Um, bars, clubs, breweries. Breweries are huge in Bellingham. Definitely take a day, a whole day to go to the breweries and stay overnight if you can. Um, yeah, definitely that's like my number one recommendation for Bellingham. Bellingham's also really big for mountain biking. So if you have a mountain biking friend, go to go to Bellingham. You guys are gonna have a blast. Um, okay, so pretty much covered all those. Uh, those are my four places you have to go if you've been if you're being stationed here. So Seattle, Leavenworth, Whistler, Bellingham. Okay, please. Please go and um, let me know what you think. Okay, so uh, I mentioned earlier, but the biggest, one of the biggest head herders living here with the drawbacks is distance to the airport. So you're like a two and a half hour drive to SeaTac from here. Um, and I'm talking about Coopville. So it takes me that long to get there, but that's not even factoring in parking, um, transportation to the airport from the parking. Um, but I will cover all those. So if you're traveling on orders out of Whidbey, uh, you're probably gonna get sent, uh, and, and if you're traveling commercial as well, you're gonna get sent to the airport with the shuttle. So the Whidbey SeaTac shuttle um, is always an option for you, and it allows you to leave your car on base. You can uh, park and get picked up at the barracks or the Navy Gateway Inns and Suites. Um, that's very convenient, you know, safe, free place to leave your car. Um, and then the shuttle is probably paid for by your command um, because it's usually how they would send you to the airport on official travel. Um, if you don't want to take it for, or if you're not taking it for official travel, you just want to take it for a vacation or uh, Christmas time to head home, um, then it's about $60 each way. Um, but you're going to end up paying that much anyway in parking. So you just have to like, budget out, see what plan suits you best. So there's the Whitby SeaTac shuttle. Um, you can take the ferry as well. If you live in South Whitby, that's probably the best thing to do uh, as far as time goes. And then parking, parking at the airport. Whew. There's the parking at the airport for $30 a day. Can't beat it. It is amazing and so convenient, but it's gonna cost the most. So maybe just for like a weekend trip, do it. But for more than 10 days, it's gonna, well, more than like two days, it's gonna hurt. But um, I would never park there for like more than three days or so. Um, you have parking at the Coast Guard base if they let you on. Um, you can park there in Uber to the airport. Okay, and then lastly, there's like the park and ride kind of thing. So you park at an offsite lot near the airport. Um, I always use park and jet. It's like park and the letter jet two. So there are two lots. I always park at number two, just cause that's where I, I know um, or know how to get to. And then 
they will shuttle you to the airport itself and then pick you up when you are back from your trip. Um, you keep like a tag that has the instructions on it um, about how to call for the shuttle. The shuttle will come and get you at SeaTac. Um, so those are your parking options. Um, and travel options to the airport itself. But yeah, it's it's kind of painful because as a lot of you guys know, being in the Navy, especially being in an operational command, you don't really get many chances to travel throughout the year. And um, it's like a mass exodus at like December 22nd or 23rd every year. Everyone gets to go home for two weeks usually. Um, and it's just like everyone's heading to SeaTac. That's like the only place where you can get those longer range flights, um, hopefully like direct flights home for most people. Uh, so that's kind of been going to be your, your bread and butter for um, traveling back home to see family and friends. Um, the other option, which is amazing if you can, uh, if it works into your plan, is to fly out of Payne Field, and that's in Everett. So that is about an hour, hour, 20 minute drive from here. So much closer than like the two and a half hours to get to SeaTac. I love Payne so much because it's a much small, smaller facility. You don't get any of the rat race uh, or huge crowds you would get at SeaTac because it's only like four terminals. Um, but because of that, your options are pretty limited. There's only one parking lot. There's like the economy lot and, the, and like the premium economy lot. So uh, I think economy is like 15 bucks a day. Premium is like 25 a day um, there at the airport. I'm not aware of any offsite parking besides for us being the military. Um, you do have the option of parking at uh, the Everett shipyard. Um, and there they don't really ask you any questions like they would in Seattle. Like they ask you like, where are you heading? Stuff like that. So um, if you're a trickster and can make it work in Seattle, please do it, okay? But um, in Everett, no one asks you questions. You can just park your car and you don't have to like make up any stories or anything. Um, but yeah, so I recommend that. Um, but it, you know, I mean, you're, you're still going to pay in an Uber. Like say you park at the Everett uh, shipyard and you're trying to get to Payne, it's still going to be like a $50 Uber. So you just have to see like what what option is most economic to you and like what makes the most sense. Payne flies to a very, very like limited number of destinations. Um, right now, those include uh, Portland, Spokane, Phoenix, LA, San Francisco, and Palm Springs. That is it as far as me filming this video. They have flown direct to San Diego in the past. So that's how I know about it just because I've traveled to San Diego so much um, over the years here. It used to be like every other weekend, um, I'll fly out of pain. So um, those are your travel options. If you're stationed here, that's all I have for you today. The video is long enough. Whew. All right, well, let me know if you have any more questions. Um, it's always nice to talk to you guys and um, hopefully I'll be making more videos. So thank you all so much and have a good day, bye.